Um, welcome everyone. Really happy to be with you. Good evening, Masa al khair. Um, so while we are, um, you know, joined by people who are connecting to the YouTube, um, I, uh, I will just welcome everyone and explain why we are here tonight. So, um, Zuhair, uh, Madam, if you can also show that you are here, because now people can see you and us. Um, so we are here uh, tonight to uh, discuss what is happening, still happening, uh, ongoing struggle um, against ethnic fencing in Silwan and the beautiful uh, you know, community and communities of Silwan uh, coming together uh, to use uh, different tools like art uh, to resist. And, um, and so we are here with a wonderful group of different uh, faces and um, active members of the Silwan uh, neighborhoods community. Um, so in this event, we are organizing uh, Rabbit with also art forces in the US uh, and in, in partnership with, um, you know, AROC and, and Mecca. Um, and so, you know, it's, a, it's obviously a difficult time, as you might have seen. It's continuing, uh, you know, the assaults and the violence are continuing, uh, both on the ground and against, uh, you know, the homes and houses of communities, but also against uh, the people who are trying to defend the rights of these people, uh, including our friends and comrades in different NGOs who are being under attack. Uh, and unfortunately, this is all very much connected. Uh, you know, uh, Israel's impunity is continuing and they are trying to uh, repress, uh, you know, the international support for the Palestinians and, you know, our Palestinian people who are trying to speak up and defend their rights. So we are here with these people tonight. So welcome. Welcome. So I have uh, today with me Dawood El Ghul, who's, um, uh, you know, a cultural and human rights uh, defender and activist from Jerusalem, from Silwan, uh, a long time, uh, you know, uh, um, expert also and very knowledgeable on this, on this cause. Welcome, Dawood. Uh, I have also with me tonight uh, Zuhair El Rajavi. Uh, Zuhair, you are the director of the Mada Center in Bat El Hawa and an active member of the Bat El Hawa neighborhood community in Silwan and also uh, a rights defender in, in Silwan. Welcome. And also Manar Shrete. Uh, Manar, you are also in Silwan and you are uh, managing the project um, uh, Eyewitness Silwan, which is uh, the project that we are showcasing tonight um, and you know, with whom we are going to do the tours. So um, for those who, who view us and are uh, aware of and have been in events before with us, tonight we're not going to use the virtual reality to, to do the tours. We are going to actually present tours, guided tours that have been done by the Eyewitness um, Silwan project uh, and tours with people you will recognize from this panel. Uh, and so uh, we will have a discussion uh, intertwined with uh, a showcase of the tours, uh, the videos. So uh, that I'm sure you will be uh, enjoying very much. But I think what I want to start with is uh, giving the floor to Dahoud because, um, you know, I think we need to give a bit of the context. Um, so Dahoud, I want to ask you, you know, basically what has been happening in Silwan, what I think people have started to really uh, hear more about Silwan and also in conjunction with Shersha um, what is happening in Silwan and can you give us a bit of the picture of, you know, what is Israel's um, plan as, as the state and also with the settler organizations, um, what is happening there? Um, yes, that would be, that would be great. Welcome. 
مساء الخير good evening and uh, thanks for, th- for this opportunity um, to understand the concept of um, <coughs> Silwan we go back to uh, 1948 where um, uh, part of uh, the, piece, the lands of Silwan were uh, occupied and become part of the uh, no man's land or the green line uh, where according to the ceasefire uh, 1949 The border was exactly on the land uh, of Silwan, which is the part that now is uh, known uh, by the name Wadi Rababe. And we can hear this name a lot on the news where the Israeli uh, nature authority and different settler organizations are trying to confiscate the land that it used to be a property of uh, Palestinian families, even during the... <coughs> Uh, time between 1948 to 1967, people continue to uh, go through the borders to harvest uh, fruits and vegetables from their lands that it was in the green line and it was forbidden for them uh, to uh, access their lands. This connection with the land continue uh, all the time. And uh, after 1967, Silwan as part of West Bank and especially the annexed part of East Jerusalem had the sim- had similar situation of the uh, annexation process of East Jerusalem and uh, in Silwan we can say that it's more intensive for several reasons. First of all, because Silwan has a, a very important archaeological site <clears throat> that the interpretation of the biblical archaeology narrative of this uh, archaeological site uh, trying to justify the Jewish existence and the occupation in, in Palestine um, with trying to make links of history, which is according to the archaeological evidences has no one single evidence to prove it. Anyway, this site is called City of David without, uh, as I said, having any one evidence that the site is linked to uh, King David at all. Um, this is one part or one element of uh, the situation. The second one that Silwan is located exactly uh, in the south side of the old city walls, and especially close to the religious sites, uh, Laksa Mosque and the Western Wall, Ha'at al Burab, and um, several different places that uh, the location in Silwan is very important and this is the second element or reason of the intensive focus of uh, Silwan. The third is the Israeli plan to control the old city of Jerusalem and create a ring around the old city of Jerusalem where the challenge of having a, a crowded population of Palestinians in south the old city of uh, Jerusalem in Silwan and um, this is the third main reason that the Israeli focus uh, of forced transfer in Silwan to have less and less people even uh, to control all the area to make it easier to make a ring around the old city of Jerusalem. If we, if we understand the Israeli plans and in Jerusalem we can understand the link between all the different projects that it's presented as separated individual or uh, not linked project, but actually it's totally linked. And if we understand the uh, framework of the greater metropolitan Jerusalem and the settler uh, colonial plans in Jerusalem, we can easily make a link between all the different projects in Jerusalem. If uh, it's demolishing houses or evicting people from their uh, houses, if it's uh, gardens or uh, confiscating properties or a settler organization trying to uh, put pressure on people to uh, buy houses and lands or whatever project, including the what so-called development using tourism as a reason to confiscate private properties and uh, change it to uh, an investment that uh, Israeli settler organizations and uh, Israeli municipality are benefiting from uh, this confiscation of private Palestinian properties. Anyway, 
this is a whole uh, plan to create circles around the old city of Jerusalem and to control the old city of Jerusalem um, that has several mechanisms. In, in Silwan, it's intensive that has diversify of diversity of uh, several plans, including, uh, I mentioned the archaeological side, then we have the case of demolishing the houses in Al Bustan. We have the case of demolishing other houses in uh, Wadi Yasul. We have um, the several projects in uh, Wadi Rababe that already some of it, it's, we can see it there, of a development of uh, natural parks or uh, places for festivals and hikings and projects for fun that it's linked to the a green line with the project uh, shopping center Mamela that it's already open and the garden there and also the um, tramway uh, that it's also uh, going on the green line and we have also the eviction uh, uh, plan in Batn al Hawa we had also a big settlement that was uh, already built and we have a continuous building uh, on it in Ras Al Amud, and uh, nowadays we have a new buildings on the uh, old police station that it used to be a Jordanian police station, and it become Israeli police station in Ras Al Amud. That it was um, according to a deal between the Israeli government or police and the settlers. Uh, it become a settlement and uh, settlers are using this uh, building and we have uh, around 140 new apartments are already uh, built in, uh, in the uh, parking ground on the, of the police station which is a violation of the international law and we have several other uh, projects um, what I mentioned it's the collective project we have several individual uh, cases of demolishing houses or uh, uh, other cases and we have a strong resistance of the Palestinian people uh, individually or in a collective ways as similar to the uh, cases that I mentioned where we have um, community uh, committees or uh, committees that represent the communities that are they are directly affected by uh, these uh, colonial uh, policies and because of this resistance we have all the time a collective punishment media are covering a um, small part of the daily situation that we have in Silwan but every single day we have uh, actions, we have attacks on the Palestinians, we have uh, people that being arrested or injured. Every single day we have something is happening and I don't think media can cover all the things that is happening, but one of the most important examples that I wanted uh, to highlight is arresting the children as one of the collective punishment uh, mechanism that were used and continue to be used against the Palestinians in, uh, in Silwan or in Jerusalem in general. And um, you have several uh, similar collective punishment uh, mechanism, but this one uh, was one of the uh, most uh, dangerous because it create um, social psychosocial problems with the whole generation that were affected directly or indirect with the. Uh, uh, being arrested or, or having uh, someone being arrested uh, from the family and more details we can talk about it but quickly with the time that I, uh, I had I tried to uh, mention all the different uh, mechanism and uh, plans uh, that we have in Silwan and again it's part of a bigger frame um, that we have, uh, which is the annexation of Jerusalem to have it the capital of the Israeli state and a Jewish state by ethnic cleansing for the Palestinians from uh, Jerusalem. Thank, thank you, thank you, Dawood. And um, I think, you know, a lot of people forget that Sirwan is, a, is actually a, a large, a big village, right, at first, and with a lot of neighborhoods inside it. And we're talking, when we talk about Sirwan, we're talking about at least 55,000 people with all the neighborhoods that you mentioned. And so today uh, we'll have the chance to see a bit more about two of them uh, and hear a bit more about especially Batnel Hawa, of whom we have a representative. So 
Um, I think uh, for the audience, uh, we'll have the Q&A session, uh, you know, after uh, the tours and, and the panel. Uh, so prepare your questions uh, and we'll make sure to try and answer them because I'm sure there will be a lot of information uh, and a lot of things that, that, that you want to ask. So uh, let's go to Badnan Hawa uh, right now. Uh, we'll have a, a 10 minutes a 10 to 12 minutes, um, uh, you know, screening of, of a guided tour. And then uh, Manar will explain to us the, the project Eyewitness Silwan, which, you know, Daoud, you said, like, part of it is uh, of the of the systematic attacks is, is the attacks on children. I think what the project is trying to do and what you will see also in the video is, is how do we make sure that, uh, you know, children and, and generations are not um, you know, are, are coping and can have a, a way to, to for psychological and psychosocial uh, support and, and, and active participation despite un the unfortunate uh, daily violence. So uh, let's go to the tour. مرحبا أنا جنان مسودة سكان مدينة القدس في سلوان إلي أكثر من سنة بشتغل في مشروع أيوتنا السلوان وبنرسم جداريات في منطقة بطن الهواء المهددين بيوتها بالإخلاء من قبل قوات الاحتلال واليوم رسمنا جدارية للنرحل زي ما أنتم شايفين هاي هي جدارية ونفس الجدارية مرسومة في أمريكا في ولاية سان فرانسيسكو بس الفرق بيناتهم أنه هديك مكتوب عليها سنعود ولكن هاي سنرحل لأنها بتهدف إلى عدم إخلاء البيوت الموجودة هنا في الحي فكرة مشروعنا هو نوع من أنواع المقاومة حتى ما يخلو البيوت من بطن الهواء أغلب جدارياتنا هي بتحتوي على عيون الشهداء وشخصيات مهمة في العالم ككل جدارياتنا بتبين من أماكن بعيدة من أبو الطور من وادي الروابة من البلد القديم أي حد جاي على سلوان بيقدر يشاهد العيون فكرة العيون هي أنه إحنا شايفين الاحتلال لأنه هي بتطول على أكثر من مستوطنة بيوصلنا لأول جدارية عنا لليوم بجولتنا في بطن الهواء وهي جدارية اللي رسموها أطفال هذا الحي وهي اسمها We Love Silwan وصلنا أنا وياكم لثاني جدارية بجولتنا هون بهاي الجدارية زي ما أنتم شايفين هي جدارية للطائر الوطني الفلسطيني اللي هي أول مرة ارتسمت هاي الرسمة كانت بعام 2019 وكان تصميم هذا الطائر من قبل الرسام إريك نوربرغ بعام 2015 رسمه بوادي حلوة من ثم انطبع هذا العصفور وصار يتلزق كستيكرز على جدران مختلفة في سلوان عندنا هاي الجدارية اللي قبالي هي لعيون جيفارا هو أحد الأشخاص اللي ناضلوا له سنين كثيرة من أجل حرية الشعوب وصلنا أنا وياكم لهاي الجدارية اللي على يساري هي لعيون حمد موسى حمد موسى كان مزارع من سكان دير الأسد قضاء عكا في فلسطين الصورة هاي منقولة عن صورة من الفنان الفلسطيني الأمريكي جون حلقة كان محطوطة هاي الصورة بمعرضه Faces from Erased Places توفي حمد موسى ب2013 وعيني اللوحة هاي تذكيرا لوفاته نعم 
أنا الآن أقف أمام بيتي بيت زهير الرجبي ربما نجد في من خلال البيت يوجد الكاميرات الكاميرات التي تم تركيبها من أجل توثيق الاعتداءات التي تتم في الحي وتتم على عائلتي بشكل خاص ومن أجل ذلك وضعنا هذه الكاميرات لتوثق اعتداءات الاحتلال ضدنا نعم ما نرى خلفنا هو منزل عائلة أبو ناب منزل عائلة أبو ناب تم الاستيلاء عليه ب 2015 كان يسكن هذه هذا المنزل أو هذا المبنى أربع عائلات من دار أبو ناب تم طردهم من بيوتهم وتم الاستيلاء على المنزل تحول المنزل هذا من بيت يعود للفلسطينيين إلى كنيس يهودي يقومون بالطقوس في داخله شو بيعني لك حي بطن الهوى يا خالته؟ بيعنيني كل شيء لأنه بيتي فيه كل حياتي بيعنيني اشمل بيتك؟ بيتي محدد للإخلاء وشو صار بالمحكمة آخر شيء؟ بالمحكمة تأزلت على الشيخ جراح إن شاء الله إن شاء الله خير إن شاء الله إيش بيعني لك الرسومات الموجودة في الحي؟ بيعني لي وجودي وصمودي وحياتي وبيتي وكل حياتي كل شيء بيعني لي هاي رسومات مدعومه من مؤسسه امريكيه من امريكا، ايش بتحبي تحكي لهم حتى يوقفوا معكم بهيك؟ بقول لهم يسلم ايديهم لانهم متضامنين معنا وحبوا يحطوا اثباتنا ووجودنا في بيوتنا. بشكرهم الله بشكرهم وبحبهم لانهم كمان حطوا عيوني في قلب الدار. زي ما انت شايفين هذا العيون بيان بنت ابني وفوق احطوا عيوني وعيوني كمان اه خلينا نطلع نشوف عيون الحجه ام ناصر فوق تفضل اطلعي فوق ما انت عارفه وين العيون تفضل ويرضى عليك اوعوا روسكم بس من هالدرج خالته مناصر ايش بتحسي لما تشوفي علامة المستوطنين الاحتلال وراك؟ بحس بالالم الم انه بيتي انا يعني هذا بيتي اصلا هذا اللي حاطين عليه العلام بيتي بيتي هذا بيتك اخذوه مني اخذوه مني وملفه مع رب العالمين ما اخذنا اه احنا يعني الم شو الم لانه نحط هلا اجيب علم احطه تشوفي شو بيهجم علينا 50 جندي احنا فيش لنا امان وامان لا امان ولا امان، فيش إنا بدنا الله يخالفه اه والله كل يوم بتصير مناوشات بين شرطة الاحتلال اه بتصير مشاكل وبتصير اشياء كثير بالحارة زي ما انتم شايفين، كل يوم بتعرفوا تسمعوا خبر حدا مثلا يا انسجن يا يا تصاوب يا هيك شيء انتم بيتكم برضه مهدد بالاخلاء شيء ما؟ اه انا بيتي مهدد بالاخلاء واحنا طبعا مش رح نطلع منه، يعني لو اجوا وقالوا لنا اطلعوا احنا مش رح نطلع منه، انه هذا بيتنا يعني كل حجر صغير لقيناه على الارض حاطينها في هالبيت يعني ما في مش رح نعطيهم اياهم يعني لهي الدار انه هذا كله النا يعني هاد شايفينها يوم قبلنا بتمخترع كيفهم في حارتنا وفي ارضنا هاي بلدنا كمان ام مصطفى الرجبي اليهود بضلهم يضايقونا وبضلهم ينبوا علينا حجار وحفاضات اشياء نخاف ان يطلعونا من الدور كنت هون يا مصطفى لما رموا عليك الحفاضات شو كنت بتسوي؟ كنا قاعدين هون على الكراسي قاعدين مع اولاد عماتي برموا علينا اشياء من فوق 
وحاليا احنا وصلنا لسطوح عائلة كايد الرجبي احد افراد المهددين بيته بالاخلاء هذا البيت وراه بنشوف بيت ابو ناب اللي احتلوه المستوطنين هذا هذا السطوح هو المنفذ الوحيد للاطفال اللي عايشين في الحي فالاخ كايد حط شادة لانه بتعرضوا الاطفال وهم كعائلة من الاذى من المستوطنين في رمي القمامة والحجار على رؤوسهم Of, um, what is happening in, in Baden el Hawa of, of its people, uh, of the risk and the violence. Um, you know, there was a few images of this marathon that we did. Uh, I, actually, I was there. Remember uh, Zuhair and, and Manar? Um, it was beautiful, you know, this action of doing a marathon from Shasharah to Silwan. Um, and we ended in this tent of solidarity that I think has been destroyed many, many times by the police and is one of the, again, the gathering points for Baden Hawa people. And it's tremendous, the violence. Um, there was many people uh, injured, uh, arrested, uh, brutal, but that's only, you know, one only small part of what Silwan people are, are living every day. So um, you also got to see some of the murals, uh, the, the beautiful paintings. And I want to uh, invite Manar now to talk a bit about this this project and uh, how you see this and how do you see the importance of art as a tool for uh, Silwan's resistance. Thank you, Ines, and hello, everyone. First, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to be here among you all. My name is Manar Shetek, I'm living in Jerusalem, and I currently work as a painter, translator, and project manager for Silwan's based art project called Eyewitness Silwan. Eyewitness Silwan is an international public art project in support of Silwan's long-standing fight against disposition. It is co-organized by the Mada Silwan Creative Center and Art Forces based in the USA. The first two murals took place in 2015 in Wadi Hilwe, and the project in Batn al Hawa has been going um, since 2018. In Batn al Hawa, I witnessed the one project is an art uh, installation that features large images of eyes that belong to local heroes, artists, activists, um, international leaders, and revolutionaries. And they include George Floyd, Rachel Corey, and uh, Che Guevara. A picture can paint a thousand words, as do the murals we paint uh, in Batn al Hawa. These large images of eyes speak to you when you look at them. 
murals of large images of eyes that dare to look back at the occupying forces and uh, bear witness to the colonial violence that is wielded against the Palestinian people. As uh, Susan Green, who's the director of Art Forces, said in her uh, article, Eyewitness Luan, who is watching whom, she stated that Eyewitness Luan looks the colonial gaze in the eye. This project is the voice of Silwan's community. To me, art is teaching and learning. Art can be exciting, empowering, and is expression. But art can also be a challenge. It can make you feel um, sad and happy at the same time, uh, frustrated and rewarded. It makes you feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment when you, for example, finish painting a mural that holds a very deep message to your community. It brings with it a uh, determination to do even better and better when you see the reaction of the community and their non-stop thinking. The smiles um, we see on the people's faces are priceless. People, including adults and children, were and still praising and supporting the work we're doing. They are treating us in a way that makes us feel at home starting with the simplest things like a cup of um, lemon to ease the heat or a cup of uh, cappuccino to warm us while painting in winter. To the most difficult things such as helping us move materials or reach different uh, difficult places to paint on, the community embraced us and made us feel like we're home. For example, one woman of the Nilhawa community once um, stopped by us while we were painting and she expressed how eye-catching and relieving it is to walk down the streets of Bat Nilhawa and how bright the neighborhood now looks. Moreover, almost all kids in Bat Nilhawa enjoy helping us paint. They talk about how they were uh, part of finishing this or that mural and the children's voices, which is more important, are present in the paintings we do. Their hands are in the work to co-create their space and their home. But uh, painting murals in Bat Nilhawa might also bring sadness to you. Frustration comes when the Israeli occupation forces the Silwan community to paint over some murals using white paint because of nonsense reasons. Or when our comrades and their children are arrested and that the entire community is threatened with this position. Here in Silwan, in the neighborhood of Batn Hawa, we are using art as a means of empowerment. I would like to take the opportunity now and thank Jinan Masoude, who is a team member of Eyewitness Luan Project. Um, she was the reason behind me joining this project. She introduced me uh, to this project. She was actually my neighbor in Silwan and one of my childhood best friends. We both kept in touch even my uh, even after my family decided to leave uh, to leave Silwan and live in another village. Uh, Jinan is an interior designer at Dar al Kalima University. It was her university teacher who recommended her to join the project. She contacted me then and I found my opportunity to go back to Silwan, where I spent my childhood. When I asked Jinan what the project is to her, she said being an artist isn't just about putting pencil to paper or brush to canvas. The streets of Batn al Hawa is um, the streets of Batn al Hawa are our canvas and the galoon of paint is our brush. The other team member of Eyewitness Silwan project is Laura Rosner. Laura is a Jewish American muralist and art educator. Uh, her intention is to build solidarity through community art projects that can serve as a platform for people and issues to express themselves in the struggle for uh, peace and liberation. Laura states that despite the occupation, the children and their involvement with the painting is the hope of the future for a liberated Palestine that will manifest. And she said that we're trying to speak out with paintings and visual images. We paint images of hope and liberation. This project brought peace and comfort to the hearts of the residents of Silwan. It brings life into public spaces. 
it brought images of trees where there are none left anymore. The murals can be seen from miles and miles away from Sinwar. These murals grab attention and so raise questions about what these murals are and what are they painted for. In Batn al Hawa, you are not dealing with people living a normal, comfortable life. You're basically dealing with people living and operating on the level of survival mode. These people, my people, are living under the threat of being evicted from their own houses. Palestine, Jerusalem, Sheikh Jarrah, which is a Palestinian neighborhood in Israeli-occupied East Jerusalem, and I believe you've all heard about this neighborhood and the struggles they're facing to keep their homes. Batn al Hawa and many other places suffer from the ongoing issues of ethnic cleansing. So to have such a project that helps these people bear the challenges they are forced to be living daily is just overwhelming. No words can describe how grateful we are to be part of this. Finally, despite the oppressive measures, the social, cultural, economical injustices against the residents of East Jerusalem in general and of Silwan in particular, the international silence and the omission of the issue of Jerusalem from the concern of many, the residents of Silwan have decided not to give up to the agenda of the settlers associations, which are on the rise and aim to Judaize the village of Silwan and Wad Hilwe and Batn al Hawa, and to be effective in communicating the correct information that concerns us all. So today, I ask you all to be part of raising the voice of Silwan. Nowadays, um, social media is the mass of protest. Sharing pictures and videos can be more helpful than you could all imagine. You all can be part of this project. Showing support and solidarity can make a change. The ruins and the story remains and the residents of Silwan are still in their homes and did not leave and they will not leave. Susan Green, um, our beloved organizer and manager, and Zuhair Rajabi, who never failed to help us, and the community of Silvan, we, the team of Eyewitness Silvan, sincerely thank you all for everything you've done to us and you're still doing. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Mana. Thank you for your inspiring and beautiful words. Thank um, you. And, you know, you remind us of the importance of solidarity and solidarity, uh, you know, uh, uh, th there is these two paintings, right? The, the painting that is in San Francisco and also in, in Silwan. And I think it's both ways. We At the end of the day, the, 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 the struggle in Silwan is a struggle for freedom and for justice and for dignity. And I think with uh, that can relate and, and, and be, you know, heard and felt by so many communities uh, around the world. So thank you, thank you, Manar. Um, thank you. And shout out to the to the comrades and, and allies in, in the US. Um, so I will I will now give the floor to, to Zuhair before we go into the last, the other tour uh, in another neighborhood of Wadi Hirwe. But first, I wanna uh, invite Zuhair El Rajabi uh, to explain a bit more of the, you know, the political struggle uh, and the current struggle of Batn al of these families that uh, the settler organization of Ateret Kwanim with backing of the state of Israel and the municipality of Jerusalem is trying to evict. Uh, so Zuhair will speak uh, in Arabic and uh, Maram, who's with us as well, uh, will translate directly uh, what Zuhair is, is, um, is saying. So. We're sorry we don't have simultaneous translation, but it will work out uh, perfectly. Uh, and so, uh, Zuhair, please, Tadal. Shukran, Yisad Masa al Jamia. I'm a barrack ala nafsi, Zuhair Rajabi, min Hai Batn al Hawa, Masul Lejnit, Hai Batn al Hawa, Ahad al Muhaddadin, Ki Awamir al Ikhla. Sahi Hana Bidat had us ala Noktutin Muhammad, Ilumi. شو اللي عم بحصل اليوم بسلوان وببطن الهوى بالأخص اللي بحدث في عماله في بطن الهوى هو سياسة ممنهجة 
من أجل طرد عائلات موجودة من الخمسينات والستينات موجودة في هذا الحي 86 عائلة مهددين بالطرد والإخلاء من قبل عثير الكهانين بادعاءات على ما قبل 1892 أنه كان يوجد هنا مساحة أرض لليهود اليمنية واليوم يحاولوا يطردوهم ما بعرفش تم منار ولا كيف تمام Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, he would like to first introduce himself. His name is uh, Mr. Suhair Rajabi. He is uh, the head of one of the committees in Batn al Hawa and also one of the families um, that are facing uh, eviction orders in the neighborhood. Uh, what is happening in Silwan right now is a systematic policy from uh, the Israeli government to evict uh, 86 families uh equaling 700 individuals from their homes what says okay. okay. والداعمة لإلها الحكومة الإسرائيلية من أجل تهجير هذه العائلات بالدعاء لأنه ما هو الحوض المقدس وهذه مكان مقدس ويجب أن يكون بمكان هؤلاء العائلات الفلسطينية مستوطنين من أجل اكتساب العدد السكان لهؤلاء المستوطنين وما يدعون إليه اللي هو هيكل المزعوم بمكان المسجد الأقصى وهدم المسجد الأقصى ولا آخره هذا ما يحدث في في بخصوص بطن الهواء وهذا ما يحاولون أن يكون لهم الدور الأكبر بهذا المكان. تفضل أستاذ. So um, today what's happening in Batn al Hawa or Silwan in general is not a normal situation. Um, the uh, Settler organization at Rate of Kahonim is uh, trying to uh, basically domicile uh, settlers in place of the people of Batnil Hawa, uh, claiming that it's a holy uh, site where uh, Palestinians cannot live there anymore. However, they are trying at the same time to introduce settlers to the area, just like what uh, has happened or has been happening in. Um, in place of Al-Aqsa Mosque about the claims of um, the, uh, the Temple of David. توجهنا حتى للحكومة أو للشرطة الإسرائيلية لا يعني لهم أي شيء ولا يستقبلوا الدعاوى والشكاوى تبعونا مع الأسف هذا ما يحدث أما ما حدث بالجلسة الأخيرة التي كانت ب 25 الشهر في المحكمة العليا نعم كان هناك جلسة لعائلة إدويك طبعا عندما نتحدث عن آلة دويك نتحدث عن بناية تتكون من أربع طوابق يسكنها سبع عائلات ما يقارب أربعين لخمسين شخص في هذه المبنى تفضل أستاذ مرام yes um, so uh, moving on to the um, situation that's happening with the courts and Batn al Hawa right now <coughs> the main um, uh, the main issue they're dealing with right now has to do with the, family, uh, the Dwake family, who are not just one family. We're talking about a whole building with four floors, um, around 50 to 70 people who are facing eviction. Um, of course, before getting to the Supreme Court, um, the uh, family tried to uh, resolve this issue with um, different courts, and then uh, after trying to exhaust all the resources uh, at court, they had to uh, appeal it and go and move on to uh, the Supreme Court. 
عندما استنفذت كل المحاكم الإسرائيلية عائلة دويك المحكمة الصلح والمركزية والعليا استأنفنا من جديد من أجل الأقدمية أو ما يعني بالأحرى لأنه لأنه يحقها أن أن تسكن في هذا المبنى وهذا بما أنه هي موجودة من الأربعة وستين توجهنا ومع الأسف مربوط بهذا القرار ست عائلات أخرى يعني أيضا ما يحدث لعائلة دويك يحدث للعائلات الأخرى عائلة شويكي وعائلة عودة وعائلة أبو ناب وعائلة غيث وعائلتين من عائلة الرجبي أيضا ينتظروا هذا القرار وكان من المفروض أيضا المستشار القضائي أن يكون له رد لهذه القرارات مع الأسف لم يعطي أي رد والتزم بالصمت ولكن كان هناك له دور في هذه القضية صغير جدا هو أن لماذا أبو التربس أو ما هو يسمى أملاك العدو لم يأتي بالسبعين أو بالثمانين أو بالتسعين أن يطالب بهذه العائلات أو يقول لهم أنتم هنا تسكو أو تجلسون على أرض ليس لكم أو ليس ملككم كما يدعون مع الأسف حاول أن يبرر هذه القضية للمحكمة ولكن المحكمة لم ترد أن تسمع هذا القرار Um, of course, one of the things uh, that the Dwayne family tried to uh, introduce to the court is the um, uh, the the principle of seniority and how this uh, Dwayne family has been living in Silwan since the 60s. Um, however, this did not really help the case. Um, Right now, uh, there was even a question from uh, Abu Trobos where um, they, he asked, why didn't these people come and claim uh, this land in the 60s or the 70s? Why now? But that didn't really help. When we're talking about the Dwayne family, it's not just the Dwayne family and, and their building. There's another six families that are... Um, waiting for an order from the court as well and if it doesn't go well for the Dwight family uh, it will probably not go well for the others uh, we're talking uh, sh the family Shweki, um, two Rajabi families and uh, another three oh they will wait to open up okay uh آه هذا القرار آه آه ليس بالسهل وليس بالايجابي ما نراه انه يعني بوجودنا بالمحكمه مع الاسف كان نشعر ان يكون ربما يكون رد قريبا جدا ان يكون قرار سيء او ربما يكون قرار آه ليس لمصلحه العائلات الفلسطينيه نتحدث عن سبع عائلات ما يقارب 250 ل 300 شخص موجودين اذا صدر القرار بحقهم فليعلم العالم أن هؤلاء العائلات سوف يكونون مكانهم بالشارع ولا يكون لهم مأوى آخر نتحدث عندما يصدر هذا القرار أن بعد هذا القرار يوجد 86 عائلة أيضا مهددين بالطرد ومهددين بالتهجير لا يوجد لهم مع العلم أن هؤلاء العائلات هجروا بال67 وطردوا من بيوتهم ومن أراضيهم واليوم يحاولون أن يطردوهم مرة ثانية هذا ما يحدث في بطن الهواء بسلوان. Of course, we're waiting for a court order uh, that should be coming soon. Uh, unfortunately, if it uh, the result will be negative, we're talking about 700 people that will uh, no longer have homes. 86 families will be threatened with nowhere to go. Not to mention that uh, these families were already displaced in uh, 1967, so this will be the second time um, to be uh, displaced again. So this is what's happening in Bakhmil Hau right now. I don't know. 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 أن يدافع عن هؤلاء العائلات نحن نتوجه للمحاكم الإسرائيلية ولكن دون جدوى يجب أن يكون هناك من يدافع عن هؤلاء الفلسطينيين وعن هؤلاء العائلات الذين سوف يهجرون ويطردون من بيوتهم من يكون لهم هو الذي يكون أن يدافع عنهم إلى متى إلى متى يجب أن ندفع هذا الثمن 
نحن سنوات ونحن ندفع هذا الثمن، سنوات ونحن آه ان ندافع بانفسنا وباولادنا وباطفالنا وبيوتنا وهدم الى متى؟ الصحيح ما انا اراه انه شيء يعني يجب ان يتوقف، يجب ان يكون آه احد او شخص يقول لهم ان يتوقفوا ويجب ان هؤلاء العائلات ان تعيش في بيوتها بامان وبسلام. Um, I don't know who can help us and who can defend these families and their rights. We are trying to go through the Israeli system and Israeli courts, but uh, it is completely biased. Um, and until now, uh, we have been paying the price for this, defending our land with everything that we've got, even our bodies. Uh, I don't know who's going to be able to help us and help stop this. once and for all so these families can live peacefully in their homes في النهاية أود أن أقول أنه نحن أصحاب حق لن نتنازل عن شبر من أراضينا لن نتنازل عن شبر من بيوتنا لن نترك بيوتنا مثل ما تركوا بال67 ونهجرها ونذهب لا لن نذهب سندافع عن بيوتنا بكل الطرق والسبل بكل الاساليب السلميه والغير السلميه من اجل حقنا، نحن لن نترك بيوتنا، وشكرا لكم وانا سعيد باستماعكم لنا وشعوركم معنا لانه هذا ايضا ربما يعطينا نوع من الحافز لانه ان نستمر في صمودنا. And finally, um... Mr. Suhair would like to confirm that this is our right. Um, this this land is ours. These houses are ours. We will not leave our our homes like we left it in 1967. We will defend our homes and our land in every way we can, whether it be peaceful or not. Um, he would also like to thank everyone here for uh, listening and for being present and participating in this event. Um, your presence gives hope. and helps the people in Silwan uh, stay resistant and continue to fight this in all the ways possible. And thank you. Thank you so much, so, so much, Suhair. Um, I want to remind, you know, the audience that, you know, yourself, you are living with, uh, you know, 24 hours uh, surveillance cameras in your home, all over your, uh, around your home, just to avoid harassment and attacks of settlers. Um, so the situation is terrible, and as you said, uh, one has to remind that part of the strategy for, you know, exhausting Palestinians is also to drown them in legal legalities and, and legal procedures. But uh, you cannot, as a Palestinian, win in Israeli courts. It, there is no justice for Palestinians in Israeli courts because the laws themselves that are used by the state and by the settler organizations are... discriminatory um, so I will also we will give you in the in the channel uh, on the chat some further background information but you know there are several laws that basically uh, since 1948 and then with 67 Israel has taken land as basically state property and then slowly has transferred that property to settler organizations so You know, very much the state of Israel is using those private actors, like those settler organizations, to also advance its plans. So this is very much intertwined, and I think it's important to, to understand. Uh, so there is no other way but to change these laws and to change the system overall, because going to court will not, you know, give peace of mind and, and the rights to the families of Baden Hawa and Silwan. So... Uh, we'll go into the last, uh, into the, the other tour that is, is, is going to be in Wadi Hilwe, which is close to Badan Hawa. It's at the entrance of the, of the, the Silwan village and is also where, uh, unfortunately, uh, El Ad, another settler organization, El Ad, is uh, also using tourism and archaeology uh, to seize land and to destroy Uh, Palestinian homes and to try and, and basically grab the whole neighborhood. So you'll see in the video. So uh, yeah, enjoy the, the tour and we'll come back for questions.
Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sahar Abbasi. Uh, I work in a community center called Wadi Hilwa Information Center and Mada Creative Center as the deputy director of the center and women and children activity coordinator. We are doing art, we are doing music, we are doing all cultural activities. And it's important for the uh, continuing our life here. Now they believe uh, the stone is not the only weapon we have. So they use the other tools. Again, stones will stop if occupation stops. Today in this virtual tour, I will take you around in uh, Silwan, in Wadi, specifically in Wadi Hilwa neighborhood, so you can know more about this neighborhood, about the challenges we're facing, uh, I hope that you will understand more, you will uh, know more about our stories. Here in Silwan and then everywhere in Palestine, we're not just only numbers. We are people with stories, with hopes, with everything. Silwan has 12 major neighborhoods and Wadi Hilwe is the most important neighborhood of Silwan because it's considered to be the entrance for Silwan. It is very close to the Al-Aqsa Mosque as well as the Walling Wall and the main entrance to the old city through Dungate. Wadi Hilwe gets its importance because it's really subjected to settlers and settlement organization. And as we will see now, the most important uh, archaeological site, which is called City of David. What they call City of David, uh, 20 years ago, it was just one of the blocks of Wadi Hilwe. It was uh, full of houses, Palestinians, families in that area, who had to evict those houses through absentee property law. They were kicked out uh, suddenly without any kind of notification from their houses. And uh, then they established this uh, tourist site. Uh, I would like now to show you one of the Families, some rain family, they have uh, a story to be told in this uh, virtual tour. Please come and let's see it. I'm a Sumerian, I'm a Luan, 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 وعشت يعني هي الفترة وجبت أولادي كلهم يعني معي سبع أولاد بعدين المستوطنين نزلوا علينا وحكوا إنه هذا البيت لهم الأرض كانت معنا هاي أخذوها يعني إنه كريم كيامة واللي أعطاهم الأمر والأوامر وسلمهم إنهم يجوا يأخذوا بيوتنا ويأخذوا أراضينا فاحنا يعني نرفض هذا الحكي اخذوا الارض هاي وبعدين احنا رفعنا عليهم قضيه عشان الارض مع ياكوب بيدمان كان المحامي تبعنا وقضيه الدار يعني نجحت وطلعت لنا وبعد ما يعني اخذوا الارض صاروا يطالبوا في البيت يعني واستأنفوا على البيت وقبل ثمان سنين اجتنا ورقه اخلاء احنا يعني مستحيل نطلع من دارنا يعني هذا اجرام انا بتامل من الله انه يكون نطلع بعدين هم مش بس بدهم بيت يعني بدهم بيت بدهم كل بيوت سلوان عملوا كل يوم نسمع في هدم وردم واخلاء البيوت كثير في مشاكل في البلد سمرين فاميلي they are fighting against absentee property law against evicting their houses since 25 years now they are fighting against Al-Ad, the settlement organization, which is the biggest settlement organization existing in uh, all Israel. It's controlling the archaeological site, City of David. It's it, it has the authorization by the state of Israel to lead all the excavation, not just only in Silwan and also in the old city. They are fighting against Al-Ad. I would like to talk a little about Siam family. Unfortunately, they have lost their house. Join me so you can see what we're talking about. This is the house of uh, Siam family. Unfortunately, they, they the same is almost the same story like Sumerian family we mentioned before. They also have been in years fought uh, for, against absentee property law, against eviction their houses, against the Had organization, settlement organization. Uh, and now those settlers are living in this house almost one year. Uh, I know this story because uh, our director Jawad Siam he he owns uh, this house him and his family. 
Besides losing the house, now they have fines against them. We're talking about approximately one million shekel. This is one of the first murals. Uh, Art Force worked uh, with us uh, on it. Uh, and it was chosen um, reflecting our feelings here as Palestinians, that our homeland is not a suitcase and we are not leaving. We're very proud of it. While we were attacked by the municipality workers, they tried to come and to paint it, but uh, they couldn't manage because it's a private wall and the owner of the house said, I, uh, I have uh, the right to put whatever. Uh, on my wall. Uh, the issue against it was that it hurts the feelings of the settlers. Uh, this family is being evicted since all, almost two years from their house because it was too dangerous for them to continue living. And what is the main reason is their excavation under those houses. We weren't informed by the excavation. We knew it about it just by accident. It was a heavy winter when uh, a classroom full of almost 30 girls fall down at another school with the, the teacher and the girls fall down. From there we discovered as Palestinians living in this area that uh, huge tunnels are dig being digged under our houses. And we're talking about two decades and more. I saw many people shouting. I asked them what happened. They told me that these two slaves were hitting the, the kids in the street. I looked for my two kids. Suddenly I saw one of these two slaves put his M16 in my son. He was nine years old. He said, if you touch me, I will shoot you. Okay, but I want to speak to you, to ask you what happened. If they did something wrong to you, you have the, the gun guard. They were uh, looking, they were, they see everything. And suddenly you shoot me. I mean, they are the first one here in this lake. And the, the, all the people were in shock. Why? They, don't, they didn't know why he shot me. I fell down, the people started shouting. He went down again and he shot another boy who was riding a bicycle, 13 years old, and came back to me while my two sons were crying and I was bleeding. He shot me the second one in the second lake. And he ran away. For him, the policeman arrested him only 24 hours. They released him. I did seven surgeries in my two legs. After 24 hours, when he shot me, they came and they arrested my two kids. They took them to an investigation. And the, 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 the general question that they asked them, why you were playing in the street? My sons came back to the hospital to visit me and they were afraid. I asked them what happened. They wanted to tell me we are sorry because we were playing the street. This mural, uh, it's been uh, for almost a year. Uh, it has uh, done with the help of uh, activists and painters from uh, USA. Uh, also our children, our youth participate. You know, the idea from having these murals in that specific no neighborhood is what it was to bring in the life, uh, to put our uh, fingertips as Palestinians live in this area. This mural, it shows a part of uh, Silwan Pool. Silwan's pools, they are the symbols of Silwan. Since uh, 5,000 years ago, my childhood, I was going there, now my children, they are not allowed. So this is why I, 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 we focus that we, we should present the beauty of Silwan and what is Silwan is uh, resembling. Green, uh, you know, water, this is Silwan. 
tranquility, peace of mind. This is the meaning of Selwan. Unfortunately, we are losing this meaning. I want them to, to, to be just only children, to play, to have fun. Unfortunately, it's not happening. This is something they live it every day. If they will pass coming from their houses to the center, they will see settlers, they will see the guards, they will see the police uh, forces. Clashes happening, so they are hearing. And this one, which is we really proud of it, which uh, talks about the history of Silwan, uh, our grandmothers, the way their traditional dresses, the way they were holding the figs from Al Bustan. <laughs> This is settlement we can see it. It was taken considered uh, considering this uh, properties as absentee properties law. So they took it from the Palestinians and give it to the uh, Jewish settlers. Absentee liberties law, this, uh, this is uh, an occupation law uh, made in order to control the Palestinian land and properties. You can see the, now you can see the, the streets here and the roads. Suddenly you are, you are in uh, a place. So here so we call it in Silwan the Little Italy here. Uh, you can see it's made very nice for the tourists because tourists come from here and you don't you have the feeling you are in a Jewish neighborhood. Uh, surrounded by a Palestinian uh, village. But in fact, the, still the majority are Palestinians here but they try to hide that there are any Palestinians living here. Of course, uh, they do it through uh, their power, what they got from the state, mm -hmm. uh, from the state, and uh, the state gives them everything what they want, whatever they want to build. They can build, you can see here. See, this house was taken uh, by, uh, from a Palestinian family and uh, was rebuilt and 167 uh, square meter uh, this house where we Palestinians, we never get uh, permission to build. Even the houses that were built before the occupation are considered as illegal because they consider this neighborhood as a national park uh, area. So, of course, once the settler is living in a house, he, they can build. But if the Palestinians, uh, you can see here, they have demolishing orders. Most of the houses, what you see here in the village, they have demolishing orders. Whatever they do, we will stay here. Because my homeland is not a suitcase, I am not a traveler. available um, so now is the time where you can ask questions to you know our guests and uh, you know it's a great chance that we have them with us so if you have questions for either Zuhair or Manad or uh, Daoud uh, please feel free to ask them um, I have a first question here uh, from Michelle uh, and uh, I think I will ask this question to, to you Daoud um, you know, the, the question is, um, so they have used, you know, the settlers and the, the, the state of Israel uh, has used uh, archaeology, uh, but also uh, the question is how maybe they have used anthropology. Um, and in a sense, I guess, you know, it, it can link to how they have used religion, uh, especially in Silwan to take over 
uh, you know, um, the land and, and basically advance the plans for ethnic cleansing. Can you develop a bit more about this instrumentalization and how, you know, it has developed over the years uh, briefly? Okay, it's like, um, <clears throat> that's a big question. Um, uh, different science were used for, uh, first of all, to create the Jewish nation. Uh, and the Jewish uh, state, and uh, <clears throat> uh, this is part of that. Archaeology, biblical archaeology mainly, was not used by the Israeli in the beginning. It was used by uh, different European countries uh, to solve the problem of Jews and to convince Jews to leave from Europe to uh, Palestine. And then we had like uh, also anthropology were used in, in several uh, layers and different fields, uh, including studying the Palestinians and uh, creating propaganda or different plans targeting the Palestinians, or also uh, collecting information and uh, uh, in 1948 is very famous uh, and later on. Um, I can go a lot with like uh, different details and information about uh, uh, about that, but mainly it's uh, it will be used as uh, information to uh, support or uh, uh, to develop the plans and also for propaganda uh, in different levels uh, toward Palestinians or also to. Uh, mobilize the Israelis uh, and also an, an uh, international level. Thank you, thank you, Daoud. Um, and yes, I think uh, also uh, to to you know, if you want to receive more information, feel free to also write us an email. Um, so you can uh, you know write to David, write to uh, Art Forces and the um, the partners in this in this event. Uh, and definitely, you know, to continue lear uh, learning and, and uh, receiving uh, updates from campaigns on Jerusalem and more. Uh, obviously, you can sign up to our email list and you'll receive uh, more information. So I'll ask now a question to you, Zuhair. Um, you know, um, I guess you've been you've been fighting for so many years, right, in the sports and so on. And I, I kind of want to and like I want to know what you're telling the, you know, what what is the new generation telling you, and and what are you telling the youth, and especially like your message to the younger generation in Silwan to continue uh, fighting and, and continue the struggle. بعرف إيش يمكن أسأل ال السؤال بالعربي أو مرام بدك تترجمه آه، تمام فاستاذ زهير بتسالك ايناس آه، انت صار لك عم آه، بتدافع وصار لك آه، عم آه، آه، بتجاهد بكل هاي الاشياء اللي عم بتصير بسلوان لفتره كثير طويله آه، ف تسالك بالنسبه لك آه، ايش بتحكي ل الجيل الجديد ايش كيف ممكن احنا نحفزهم انه يكملوا بهذا النضال ويكملوا بهذا المثابره اللي انت عندك اياها عشان يكملوا هذا الشغل اللي انت بتعمله <تصفيق> صحيح يعني اللي انه ممكن الكل يفكر اللي انه احنا لازم نعلم الجيل الجديد شو اللي بده يسوي ولكن اليوم الجيل الجديد هو بيعلمنا الجيل هذا الجديد جاي متعلم وجاهز جاي واعي وعارف انه هون هو له حق في العيش وله حق في الارض وله حق في النضال وله حق في بيوته وفي ارضه وبيعرف انه هي فلسطين بتخصه بتخص ابوه بتخص اجداده مش انا اللي انا لازم اقول له انها بتخصك انت طفل اليوم الطفل هذا هو عارف شو التاريخ عارف شو النضال بس برضه انا بقدر اقول له ما يتنازلش عن شبر ارض ما يتنازلش عن حقه ما يتنازلش عن حريته ما يتنازلش عن الدم اللي اللي ضحوا فيه الشهداء في هذه الارض من اجل هذه ال ال الوطن تبعه انا بتصور اللي انه هذا جيل واعي وعارف على وين رايح وعشان تبقوا عارف 
فين صدقوني انه هذا جيل مسالم مش جيل زي ما بيدعوا عنيف وعدواني و... ومجرم احنا جيل مسالمين احنا يعني مندافع بالسلم على فكره ومندافع ب... 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 بايدي يعني وبصدور عاريه بدون لا نقاتل ولا بدون سلاح احنا مندافع بس مع الاسف ما فيش حدا اللي ممكن يستمع لهذا الشيء كما يجب بس هذا الجيل عماله بيوصل رساله كما يجب بالسوشيال ميديا بالانستا بال 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 بالالكترونيكا الجديده عم بوصل الرسائل كما يجب وكيف لازم تصل لابعد الحدود ولابعد الدول العالم عم بوصلها هذا الجيل اللي احنا بنحكي عنه صحيح مرام اه كثير حكيت صحيح Uh, very empowering بس هيك uh, بشجع حقيقه كثير سو ترخيص ترخيص بس opinion is uh, the new generation uh, we don't need to te- teach them anything they are teaching the older generation actually they are very mature and very aware of what's happening they're aware of their rights uh, they uh, demand the right to live uh, to resist and to keep fighting um, they know very well uh, and they refuse to give up any anything of uh, these things that we're fighting for whether it be freedom land or their homes their people um, they are very peaceful uh, as opposed to what they have been portrayed in the media they don't want to fight uh, they don't they're not violent um, it's a peaceful uh, generation that are trying to convey uh the right messages to through different channels uh using our, of course also the right terminology to be able to reach the um western societies and, and the arabic society as well using all uh means of communication such as uh, facebook instagram anything uh technology since you know it can reach a lot of people instantly thank you and i think manar was smiling and she agrees uh, <laughs> that because oh, you are Malar, the, the new generation and indeed i think we've seen that uh, in the latest uprising uh, you know that uh, the younger generation is coming together and knows how to take up the fight uh, it is it is a struggle it is it is a fight you know there is confrontation that we have to confront uh, settler colonialism that's that's a that's a reality um, so there is a question uh, i don't know who wants to answer uh two questions one is um is what are the main associations working in sirwan and what are the links and relations with uh associations in shahsharah and uh the second question is it possible to visit now um you know jerusalem and uh sirwan and shahsharah and so do you want to give a message to people who want to uh come and who want to know more how to be in solidarity with you uh locally Whoever wants to reply, I can maybe yeah. um, answer. Uh, first of all, we have um, different uh, organizations uh, in in Silvan uh, working in different fields. Um, first of all, we have committees in each uh, neighborhood that has uh, a collective uh, target uh, for eviction or demolishing the houses uh, or different cases. Uh, and all of these committees are uh, uh, having a coalition or a central committee it's called like that uh, for coordination and working together uh, also we have ngos cbos working in different fields especially with uh, uh, children women and different uh, uh, other fields like culture social uh, fields um we cannot also uh, avoid having the political parties uh, even if it's less uh, powerful than before but it's uh, also still uh, existed uh, even if it's uh, forbidden and uh, not allowed to officially exist in in Jerusalem and uh, the cooperation or relation with Sheikh Jarrah it exists as a cooperation mainly with the youth committees because we have the official let's say committee or the old committee of uh, people were following the cases in courts and recent 
see with the uprising in May, we started to have in parallel uh, youth uh, committees and groups uh, in Sheikh Jarrah and also in Silwan. They were uh, effectively active uh, on on the ground, not only on social media. media. And uh, they have uh, a direct uh, communication and coordination uh, for different uh, uh, activities and uh, campaigns. Thank you, though. Then it's true. I've been really, uh, you know, in contact with uh, a lot of different youth groups from the different neighborhoods, and I think a lot of what you have seen happening from the protests to the marathon and everything is indeed uh, thanks to I think this. Uh, communication, you know, among the different youth who are visiting each other in the neighborhoods. Manar, you wanted to add something? Oh, yes. Um, uh, there was a question asking about how to support even when uh, they are in the USA, for example. Um, I wanted to say that you can support us um, you can basically come and visit us, of course, and uh, you can um, start by following us on social media and check what the new projects we're working on daily in uh, Siluan in general and in Batnehawa neighborhood uh, in particular. And of course, to speak out uh, to the rights of Palestinians and let other people know about the facts, not what the social media shows. Uh, and the news shows, but the facts and the struggles of uh, Palestinians uh, and that there are people under the threat of being evicted of their own houses. And of course, you can actually uh, visit our website, which was um, uh, sent uh, in the chat. Uh, and you can um, help us by uh, either coming and visiting us, following us on social media or donating to the project and make it bigger to uh, let the voice of um, Silwan be heard to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Manar. And I really want to reiterate what Manar said. It's important to center Palestinian voices. I think, uh, you know, in the latest uh, wave of uprising, um, a lot of voices have, you know, uh, broken some ceiling and I think have been heard uh, thanks to social media, but there is also censorship on social media. Uh, the media is also, you know, responsible for a long time censoring and not giving space for uh, Palestinians. So wherever you have uh, platforms, space, you know, and uh, within your own struggle or, you know, to have exchanges even uh, with your own struggles, whether it's on uh, racism or uh, indigenous people's rights, uh, you know, Palestinians uh, definitely, uh, there is a lot of people who would love exchanging, love uh, being around those tables. And I think it's important to have Palestinians tell their stories. Um, and, you know, they are the ones, we are the ones who know uh, what is happening, uh, not uh, not anyone else. Um, so I think that's, that's super important. And I will also, uh, I wanted to also talk about a campaign that's important and you should also go and support. It's called Defund Racism. Uh, the defund racism campaign uh, that is endorsed by uh, many many Palestinian NGOs is focused on how you know the the settler organizations, uh, the main ones that also we have mentioned, are have U.S. charity status. Uh, they are basically fundraising in the U.S. as charities, and uh, they only exist because of that also impunity and support, including from abroad. So. Part of the campaign is also to see how can we remove, you know, um, the, the, the the funding legs of these organizations. So uh, you can go into the website, we'll put it in the chat. Uh, it's an important campaign to endorse and you will see that they have also events and uh, information um, that is very useful, uh, especially for people in the US. Um, I don't know if there was any other uh, question. Yeah, maybe for you, uh, so I don't know who wants to answer this question, and then I realize we don't have much time, but we have two minutes. So how, you know, how is the, um, how is the declaration in this attack on the human rights NGOs, uh, you know, Al-Haq and uh, Damir, etc. how can this affect you? 
And are you working with, with this kind of uh, human rights organizations? Um, just very quickly, if someone wants to answer. So here do... Um, فهمت السؤال؟ في سؤال على موضوع ال هلا ال الإعلان على المؤسسات الحق والضمير وإذا هو بيأثر على شغلكم وإذا بتشتغلوا مع مؤسسات بشكل عام بالضفة وبغزة إذا في عندكم علاقات مع البلد طبعا أول شيء أنت بتعرف اللي أنه إحنا لو تحدثنا على واتساب أو على أو حتى حطينا لايك بالنسبة على الفيسبوك على بالنسبة لغزة بأي حال من الأحوال ممكن نتحاسب عليه هون على قديش الحكومة الإسرائيلية يعني حافظة على الشعب اللي إنه ما يتواصلش حتى مع أهله فصعب علينا إنه إحنا نتواصل مع أي شخص أو أي حدا بالنسبة لغزة أو يكون لنا حتى يعني هذا والكل بيعرف هذا الإشي وناس كتير اعتقوا لي بسبب هذه الشغلات أما أن أنا صحيح يعني ما بعرفش يعني إذا بالنسبة للضمير والحق لأنه في تواصل أو لا أنا ما فيش شخصيا يعني فيش لي علاقات مع مع حدا بالنسبة لهذا أو ممكن ما فهمتش السؤال منيح منك إيناس أما أن بعرفش شو بدي أقول لك صحيح أوكي مرام بدك ترجمي الجزء من بالنسبة لغزة Yes, so uh, Mr. Zahir was saying that uh, people uh, specifically in Jerusalem and in these sensitive areas are uh, tracked pretty closely from the Israeli government. So even a simple WhatsApp message or uh, a like on Facebook um, for anything that has to do with Gaza, people have been uh, detained because of it. Um, and, and been under surveillance. So it's pretty hard to keep in touch with either West Bank or Gaza. Okay, we, we have uh, come to the time. Um, there's a lot more questions, but I'm afraid we, we run out of time. Um, I just wanted to, you know, to conclude by saying that uh, you have to remember that East Jerusalem is annexed. So that means uh, Palestinian, uh, the Palestinian authorities, uh, as they would say, political parties, any Palestinian official presence, the PLO, all of this is banned. So it's very difficult for having, you know, organizing is already a struggle. Like it's, it's amazing, like all this organizing and these projects and these institutions that are doing all this work and resisting, um, uh, in in this in this uh, circumstances, because uh, as you can see, the the police and the, the Israeli uh, occupation authorities are uh, you know brutal and, and and are using violence. And so I think uh, it's it's you know every everyone in East Jerusalem is is trying to protect their land and to trying to protect uh, the land that basically is not stolen. So I think it's a it's a daily struggle for continuing to stay. And, and I think where international solidarity is needed is to end uh, the complicity of your governments with uh, Israel, because that is the major obstacle. And I think until we change that, uh, you know, things will, will unfortunately not change uh, for the better, even if we know we have hope that uh, Palestinians and the Palestinian people will continue to resist. So. Thank you so, so much for being with us. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed, you learned. I was really thankful for Dawood, Zuhair, Manawar, Maram to be with us tonight. Uh, and uh, yeah, the fight continues and uh, we'll make sure to uh, you know, share with you the, the information by email and, uh, and, and also this video will stay uh, on the YouTube channel. So, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, and yes, come visit. I think come visit us. The, we we don't control the borders. Uh, Israel does, but soon uh, you will be able to come again. Inshallah.